हेलो हाय सर हाय 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 हेलो मॉर्निंग ओके थिंक यू शुड स्टार्ट नो इज माय स्क्रीन विजिबल या ओके आई विल स्टार्ट ओके सो in the last class we have discussed about star and snowflake is schema and the differences so any question on that any confusion anything you want to discuss in the week no okay let's proceed so if any the question comes to your mind please uh, ask me okay i think someone has asked me question last uh, week i think sunil has asked uh, who has shared me that uh, query regarding that uh, data I'm sorry i forgot the name who has shared sunil or uh, sandeep sorry i miss i think manikanta has oh manikanta has asked manikanta has not joined okay so once he will join we'll discuss that fine uh okay fine now uh, so uh, these are the differences uh, between a star and a snowflake schema and this is a very important differences so let's try to work that in a star schema the fact tables and dimension tables are contained okay so some of the differences are very simple or to a certain extent it will not seems to be different okay difference but let me know if you are facing any confusion so here it is mentioned that in a star schema you have fact table and dimension tables while in snowflake schema the fact tables dimension tables as well as sub dimension tables are contained okay so in a snowflake schema we have seen uh, in the last class that you have a concept of sub dimension okay all the dimension and facts are present in both the star and snowflake but in snowflake you have sub dimension as well so what is the reason for sub dimension in snowflake any idea <clears throat> data redundancy data redundancy is less in data redundancy data redundancy is not there in star schema and it is also not there in snowflake schema okay because to avoid data redundancy we are going in normalization and star and snowflake to a certain level they both are following normalization to a certain level okay Yeah, yeah. But, but tell me why I need sub-dimensional in snowflake schema? Like if you can see this diagram, you have this dimension, two dimension. So avoid duplications of data. No, 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 no. That was one of the reason because of normalization. But tell me the main reason of sub-dimension. What was the main reason? What was the key word which I have discussed last week? Why have you created this two sub dimension? These two are sub dimension, and here you have one sub dimension. What is the need of this sub dimension? Why have you created this? What was the main need? You see, uh, duplicates and all those things are like a bonus point, but that was the main. That that was not the main concept. But tell me, why have you created this sub dimension? What was the main logic behind this? <laughs> Uh, so in uh, dimension mm -hmm. table we can have one primary key. Mm -hmm. uh, so oh, that uh, if we will split that dimension tables, we can have more foreign keys. You have more foreign keys. Okay, fine. Okay, let's try to understand this again. Okay, or or the issue. See, uh, if I consider these two dimension tables, dealer, branch dimension. Day dimension and product and this revenue. So this this is structure was present in a star schema as well. You all have seen. Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What is the extra tables? These two are the extra tables, right? And here this is the extra table. And then we are telling that this is a sub dimension. This is example of a snowflake schema. Correct? No. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now tell me, guys. You have to be interactive. Okay. Now tell me, from this location table, 
what information i am getting location id and region location id is present here as well in dealer as well but from region. this table yeah i am getting the information about region remember in the last last class i have told you that from this dealer table i cannot get the information about region right region information is not present here that's why i have created one more table that if i will join with the location id i can get the region information as well similarly this country you have this country id in this dealer table but can you tell me what is the country name do you have that information of country name guys no no so that's why we have created a sub dimensional table country and if you have this country id and country name in this table so that whenever you will join with this country id in this table you can get the country name so the main main purpose of creating this sub dimension was to get to go at a more granular level this granular word keyword i have mentioned to get more detailed information right so that's a whenever you want or you're looking for more detailed information detail information at a more grain granular information then generally we used to go for a snowflake schema and we have to create sub dimension this is the main main reason guys okay that is the other thing that duplicate will not be there redundant data will not be there and all those things okay that's the that's, that's just a bonus point we are getting but the main purpose is to get it, to get more detailed information is it clear yeah sir clear clear to everyone yeah yes okay. yeah, clear now coming to the differences so in a star schema you have dimension and facts but in a snowflake you have dimension facts and sub dimension as well and why we are creating sub dimension in snowflake i think that is clear now okay the star schema is a top down model snowflake is schema is a bottom up model okay yeah this 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 you will think that this is something new but this is not new why i will tell you the purpose of a snowflake schema is whenever you want more detailed information or information at a more granular level i think i have mentioned this right so that's so you have to go from grain from bottom okay suppose suppose if you have to load the address detail of employees okay any particular hr database they want to save or load the address details of their employees now address details may be country and then the state and then district and then locality then sector then street and then pin code right so you can see the grain so if someone will tell you that no i want information till a state only so what is the grain here a state is the grain okay if someone will tell you that i want information till a street number so a street is the grain here because you're going at a more detailed level so that's why when you're designing a snowflake schema you have to first of all discuss you have to understand that till what level you want information so so as per that you will make sub dimension you will create sub dimension maybe in some of the requirements you have to create two sub dimension to this sub dimension as well so that's why in the snowflake schema we are going going from bottom first of all we have to discuss what is the lowest grain of information you are looking for okay but in star schema we are not bothered about sub dimension or whatever it is if suppose the same information you have to keep in a star schema okay so what you will do in location id was there you will bring region as well here so this sub dimension is not required okay so here this country id is also already present you will bring this country name column in this dealer table only so sub dimension is not required but the issue will be you will be having a lot of duplicate records redundant records that's the negative point here okay is this clear so that's what in a snowflake schema we are going from bottom up by star schema you are going from top down we are not bothered about the uh, what i can say like uh, the grain of data we will start designing from top level any question on this is this clear guys yeah clear okay now in stars so if you think if you have any question please stop me this is a very important concept and this will be used through all to your uh, database career okay star schema snowflake schema and all those things 
The star schema uses more space. Snowflake violet uses less space. Why I'm telling a star schema uses more space? No, it is denormalized. Because it is denormalized, the same data will be coming again and again. Okay. So you'll be having duplicate records. Okay. I think the example which I have shown you last time, you can see here in this example, this was based on your star schema. So the same information is coming again and again. I think I mentioned this, I've discussed this in the last class as well, that this is a repetition. So you are investing your, the disk space here. But if you're going with this format, <coughs> snowflake schema format or normalized format, so you don't have repetition that much. Even repetition will be there, will be present here, but not that much as compared to this star schema. So you are utilizing more space here. But in a snowflake schema is more normalized, so you're not just utilizing much space. You can save a space here. It takes less time for the queue execution of query, why it takes more time than a star schema for the execution of the query. Okay, this point is telling that a star schema takes less time. So I think this is a plus point with the star schema. But a snowflake schema, it takes more time for the query execution. Now you guys will tell me why why the star schema takes less time for the execution snowflake. in snowflake more joins in star Perfect. schema less number of joins very good you know snowflake schema you will be having multiple tables and i think you can see from this that you have multiple tables here right i have noted here branch hod table teacher table the student table so uh, then a score table you have five tables here so you'll be joining all these tables with the primary key foreign key constraints and all those things okay but in the star schema, you have only one table, so you can fetch data from this only. So there are no multiple joins, so it will not take much time. So guys, whenever you have whenever you have multiple joins in a table, okay, so that will take more time to fetch the data. Okay, that's one straight formula of optimization of query. So try to reduce the joins as much as possible. Okay. So the correct answer is like uh, in the star, the star schema we have very less uh, tables to joins so that's the joining condition is less that's why it will take less time but it's not like a schema we have multiple tables so there are multiple family key foreign key relationship multiple joins will be there and that's when this will take more time for the query to execute so this is like a negative point with the snowflake schema <clears throat> In the star schema, normalization is not used. Why in this both normalization and denormalization are used? I think this point is clear. So this is the point we are discussing for a long time. In the star yeah, schema, yes, normalization yes. is not there, but in snowflake schema, automatically normalization is coming into picture. Okay. But but don't think, but don't think that we are using normalization in snowflake schema. That's why we are creating a snowflake schema. No, no, this is not the reason. Okay. If someone will tell you that a star schema, if I will normalize it, I will get no, a snowflake schema. No, that's not the reason. That is just a byproduct of that. The main purpose of creating a snowflake schema is when you want more grain of data. Okay, please make a note of this point. The star schema is snowflake, is, is, sorry, uh, normalization and denormalization are a byproduct of that. But the main purpose of creating a snowflake schema is when you want more detailed information. And again, you can get a question here that up to what level you can sub dimension you can get sub dimensional table in snowflake schema. So there are no limitations. Here you have you have you can see that there is only one level. Okay. But you can split this further as well. That can be split further as well. So that will become more complicated, but that depends on the project call. No, his star schema normalization is not used, but in both normalization and denormalization is okay. This design is very simple. I think you can understand the star schema design is very simple, but snowflake is, is complex because you have to understand how many subdimensions you have to create. Okay. And primary key, foreign key, and all these things. Query complexity is slow. Query complexity is high. Now you can understand this because you have multiple tables, multiple joints are there. So query complexity will be high. This understanding is very simple. Understanding is difficult. I think it is simple. Less number of foreign keys, more number of foreign keys. Again, the same funda. It has less number of foreign keys because you have less table here. You have more number of foreign keys because you have more tables here. Guys, you all know primary key and foreign key or anyone is having any confusion, you want me to uh, repeat that, I'm, I'll be happy to cover that primary key and foreign key. 
anyone wants me to cover that please frank guys you all know primary key foreign key yes okay yes fine perfect okay uh it has high data redundancy while it has low data redundancy why it has high data redundancy because in star schema maybe the same data is coming again and again we are populating the same data again and again that's why the data redundancy is high but in a snowflake schema data redundancy is low because we are not repeating the same data it is because of the nature or the design of the data okay okay now tell me uh, which one is more normalized, a star or a snowflake schema? Come on, guys. Snowflake. 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 Okay. Which will take more space, a star or a snowflake? Star. Snowflake. Star schema will take more space. In which schema, in which schema you'll be having redundant or duplicate data? Star. Star schema. Okay. Which of the schema will take more time to execute the query? Snowflake, Snowflake schema. Okay. In which of the schema you will be having a lot of primary key and foreign key joins? Snowflake. 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 Okay. I want to design a database in which I want the employee name and their nationality only. So which schema should I go for? Star schema. Star schema. Very good, perfect. I want to design a database in which I want the student ID, student name, the semester in which they are studying, and the subjects, the marks are scored in each and every semester in internal and external exam as well. Which schema should I go for? Snowflake. Snowflake schema because we are going at a more granular level. So I think this is clear now, right? Yeah, clear. <clears throat> yeah. So what extent we can use uh, star schema? See, again, a uh, good question. That that totally depends on your project call. Okay, sometime in a project, uh, they are not bothered about the redundant data. Okay, they will tell you that okay, I'm not bothered about the redundant data. Keep all the data in one table only. Okay, that depends on your project call. But if your question is like, what is the straight answer? What what is the ideal scenario? Okay. So first of all, you should not try to keep more data in a single table. The table table will become very bulky. And the negative point of that is in a project, if, if you are working in a project, so you might have experience that in a project, a particular table is getting updated, deleted very frequently. Sometimes when your business stakeholder, they will tell you that, okay, add one more column in this, or you have to delete a particular column. Or they will tell that okay, this particular value Ramesh is not correct. Make it Suresh, something like that. By by mistake, they have entered. So, updation, deletion, insertion will become very hectic task if you're keeping all the data in one table. Okay, so that's why that totally depends on your project call. But but if you think that lot of data you are you are storing, you are dumping in a one table, so we should go for a snowflake. Or my suggestion is, or as per my experience, what we have observed is the the tech the project architect okay or your technical architect will try to go for a snowflake schema they prefer a snowflake schema more the reason is i do understand that the complexity will be more primary key foreign key combination will be more query will take more time and all those things but you know on the other hand your design will be very simple you see here this looks simple now if if a new branch is getting added you can add here but here, if a new branch is getting added, it will impact all the records, right? So that's what the design in Snowflake schema is more simple. It is simpler. So that's why the technical architect will go for a Snowflake schema. Although the designing of this is again hectic, but in the long run, it will be easy to maintain it. Okay, but that depends totally on your project call. That's the that is the definition I told you. If you're getting this question in your exam in your interviews. So you should tell them that okay, if the if the complexity is more, so obviously we should go for a snowflake a schema. And the benefit is the design will be simple because in the beginning the complexity will be more because you have to understand that how many tables you have to create, at what grain you have to go, how many sub-dimension and further sub-dimension you have to create. So that's a one-time hectic task. But in the long run, the design will be simple. Whenever any update is there, you can just you need to update in one table automatically. You will you need to update only in one table. 
and the data in another table will be updated automatically because we will run the job, right? So that is the answer. Have I answered the question or you asked? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. So that was about a star and snowflake schema, guys. So make a note of that. That's very important. And don't only think about interview perspective. Okay. Don't only try to mug up the things that, okay, I have to face interviews. No. But you should know the things thoroughly because it will help you in the long run. Even if you're working in an organization, okay, and you have a meeting with your project manager, lead, business stakeholders, and if you are giving some good suggestions, okay, or if you're adding some more points, right? that will make a good, good remarks on your side okay you will get an exceptional view okay that's why always don't think from professional perspective that okay i think this question will not be asked in the interview so let's don't read this no try to get more knowledge try to scan the linkedin in linkedin you will get a lot of useful posts are there education posts are there okay then you have many blog sites as well on blog sites is medium towards data science many other blog sites are there so we can go on google no so they will give you suggestions of all the blog sites ben brum one uh, blogger is there they will give you good sql questions go to the sql services and central server.com so you should go through all these sites whenever you have free time so you will get an idea that what is happening in the world how technology is changing and all those things so that really helps guys okay fine now moving to uh, soft delete okay so you were saying on blog name can you repeat that please so that uh, can make ben bram i told uh, yeah to now what's data science medium no no the, for the sql you said on blog is there that oh sql server central.com is this the one okay. you're telling yeah 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 okay okay I'll that's know. a very good uh blog uh, i will write here You should go through this uh, long back. My query was also published on this. So if you think that you have something different, you can publish here. SQL server central.com. Although this is a little bit uh, advanced concepts they will share. Okay. But they will share some uh, concepts on a means generic basis as well. Let me show you if I have that. Just a minute, guys. I put it in the box. Where's my box? Let me show you some of the examples. This is a very good site. Okay, the one is your paint drum. It's there. He's a blogger. He will share some good no matches. Hmm, yeah. Okay. So he will uh, post some good uh, contents related to SQL and other things. Okay. So maybe you can make a note of this. You should go through this. You see how to get current data in SQL, the cursors, SQL performance, and all those things. Automatically increment the column name. And okay. You can get some information related to that. And then you have SQL. Server central, server central. Mm. Yeah, see this one. This is a little bit advanced. Um, okay, so if you open this now, you will get multiple information. So a lot of articles, blogs will be there. If you think something is complicated, you can leave that. But every day at the bottom, you can see some more sites are there. They will ask questions as well. I've got this questions, okay. So like that you can, if you will give the answers, no? So they will add some points to your uh, account or maybe if you're interested, you can write some queries for them. You can give to them. If, if it looks good, they will publish your queries. So two of my queries are published on this long back. So these are the, some of the good sites, guys, okay? You should go through this. Then you have to watch data science, data uh, medium and all those things are good site, okay? <laughs> So, so the main uh, purpose of telling all this story is don't just limit, uh, keep it, keep yourself restricted. That okay, I like biryani, I will eat chicken biryani only. We should go for mutton biryani. You should eat fish biryani. You should eat egg biryani. You should eat some Chinese item as well. That's what you should know each and every flavors because nowadays you know technology landscape is changing like anything, anything. Believe me. So after two to three years, 
many of the new things will come into picture. So you should know all those things. Okay, don't restrict that. Okay, I know only structure data. I don't want to learn on structure data. No, I know only ETL. I don't want to understand Snowflake. I don't want to understand ELT. I don't want to understand cloud. No, you should know all those things because the market is changing. Okay. Fine, uh, soft delete. Let's try to understand uh, soft delete, what this is all about, okay? My voice is audible, right? Yeah, yes. Okay, so now I'm telling you soft delete. Uh, hope many of you knows this concept, okay? If you don't know, please ask me. Why ID, name, location. And what else information you want? I just keep this three information only. So this is the HR database. Okay, the HR database. And name is A, B, C, D, E. Location is the Kolkata. Okay. Okay, so you have uh, this uh, employee table. Okay, so yeah, this is an employee table uh, just for the sake of simplicity. I have taken only three columns employee ID, name, and location. Okay, and this is the employee ID, these are the names, and these are the locations. Okay, try to understand. We are talking about. Uh, <clears throat> Soft delete. Very, very common concept of ETL technology. Okay. Try to understand this. Very important and common as well. Now, what is soft delete and what is hard delete? So, first of all, I will tell you soft delete, then automatically you will understand hard delete. So, this is an employer table. These are the information. Okay. Next day, uh, assume employee. A resigns. Employee A has resigned from the organization. Okay. Now, after this, you have two scenarios. After this, you have two scenarios. Scenario one, your HR who is also a technical guy, okay, he will think that, okay, this employee A has resigned, so let's remove this data because he is no more in the organization, so his details are not required, so let's remove this, and he will keep this database like this, okay, this is one <coughs> scenario, and then you have second scenario, okay, where your HR will think, that okay, that employee has left the organization, he has resigned. Uh, let's not remove this. Create one more column, okay, and mark it as N. And who are still with the organization, mark them as Y. Okay, now a second HR. Okay, uh, he thought about this this situation that okay, employee A has a, a has left the organization. Let's do one thing: mark it as, uh, just mark flag as N. So from this we can understand that okay, this employee has left the organization, and we will add two more columns from date and to date. Okay, so from this we can understand that uh, till which duration he was with the organization. Okay, but uh other hr he is saying that no employee a information is not required then why you are going to add these three columns okay let's remove this from the table okay but employee uh, but hr2 he is about he's having this thought now over to you guys which scenario scenario one or same as scenario two you think is better apply your common sense scenario two <clears throat> scenario two you think is better anyone anyone else 
scenario two is better. Scenario two. Why you think scenario two is better? If you want the uh, record history of that records, uh, if you permanently remove means it will be lost. Perfect. Very good. See, try to understand this. Uh, all the both the scenarios are correct at their own uh, own uh, understanding. We cannot tell that okay scenario one is wrong or scenario two is correct. Okay, but that depends on your business use case. But scenario two, scenario two looks overall better. Why? Because you can get a track here. Maybe after some time, if the same employee is joining an organization again, it happens. No? The same organization will rejoin. The, uh, will rejoin. Okay. So in that yeah. case, your HR will be having all the information that earlier in which location he was or in which technology he was working. If he has not done anything bad to the company, if he has not done any data leakage issue, data privacy issue, all those things. Okay. Whether it will be good remark or bad remark, he will get both the information, right? Just a minute, sorry. Okay. Hmm. He will get both the information. So that's why HR, the second HR, he is he's having this thought that, okay, let's keep the information and we'll mark the flag as N. So from this, we can understand that, okay, those uh, employee records, which are with flag N, they are no more active in the organization. And we have added two more columns. This will give you more detailed explanation that, okay, when he has joined and when he has left, if it is blank, it means they have not left. Or if it is white, it means they are not, they have not left the organization. They are still with the organization. Okay. So that's why this is known as a uh, soft delete. It means we are not deleting this, but silently we are uh, muting this record by active flag N. If it is active flag N means a record is this employee is no more with the organization, but we are keeping this data so that this will be useful at any point of time in future, whenever we want more information about the simpler. But in this case, we are not storing information. If he is going to join again, or if anything happens, we will not be having any data about this employee, right? So this is known as soft delete. It means softly you are deleting. Actually, you have not deleted, but you are you have muted this record by making active flag as N. Is this clear soft delete concept? Yeah. Clear? Anyone? Any doubt? Uh, anyways, but the data will be present. Just they will. Uh, ah, perfect. Yeah, data will be present, but silently they will mark. They will create three more columns. You see, these three columns, they will create. Okay. And the purpose of this is just to maintain that whether the record is active or not. Okay. So if flag is in, it means this record is no more active. This is inactive. Okay, and if it is why it means these records are active with the organization and this time is data time will tell you that from which to which date he was active. So from this you can see okay this 21st uh, 20 December 2021 so it means on 20 December he has resigned he has left the organization. Okay, any other question. Is this clear guys. Yeah, clear. Everyone right. Okay. Now let's try to understand this from ETL perspective. Now uh, try to understand from ETL perspective and please ask me question if you think this is confusing or something. Now, first of all in ETL, our journey starts from source file, correct? No, journey will start from the source file. Now suppose we are working in a project <laughs> in which we are, we are working on HR database, okay. So let's try to understand this. Fine. Um, on a particular day, I have received this information. And we are working in full load. Now I think you guys know what is full load, incremental load, and all these things. And please stop me. If you think the things are not clear, if it is going complicated, please stop me. Because now I am correlating this from ATL perspective, how it goes. On a particular day, we are working in a full load. Okay, full load means you get the uh, records, full data on a daily basis. So, no, 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 sorry, sorry, guys, sorry, 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 sorry. Delete this one. Just a minute, hold on. Just 
define let it be whatever it is. so on a particular day okay suppose uh, this was 15th of december 15 december i have received this record in the source file okay so first of all i have received these two records in the source file so it means only two employees are there in an organization now now forget about this scenario okay forget about this scenario so you have only two employees in the organization and the source team has sent you this data on 15th of december and this was present in the source file so first of all what you will do after you have received the source file what you will do first of all basic validation we are performing okay. you will perform file the basic file format. very good you will do the basic file level validation very good perfect you will do that no chart first of all you will do the basic file level file level validation yeah. validation okay now everything looks good then what you will do so loading the data into the staging tables so for 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 that loading of data what you will do we will run a job triggering the, run the job run the stage job to load data in a staging table okay after that what you will do so okay you have run the job to load data in a stage table chart okay after that this data will be loaded in a stage table no okay so suppose the stage table name is employee underscore stage okay now in a stage you'll be having this record these two records are loaded in a stage clear okay now this was on 15th of december now consider 16th of december 16th of december you 16th of december what happens now try to understand this this is little bit complicated now 16th of december what happened now a new employee c uh employee c joins the organization now in the source file in the source file what information will be having information of a b and c or only c information will be there this may cannot be working on full load it will have all the apis a b and c the new infect because you are working on full load so full load means it will give you the previous day data and today's data as well it will give you the today's data as well right so you will get sorry b c and suppose the location is mumbai okay so now the source file now 16th of december we are we are thinking about 16th of december 16th of december this employee has joined the organization 16th of december employee c has joined the organization so we have given this entry okay now uh, after this again you will do the basic file level validation you will run the stage job to load data in a staging table uh, okay suppose while doing the file level validation here you observe that uh, this data was not present suppose this data was not present only this information was present then what you will do in this case so we assume that a and b are deleted uh, they don't no more exist in the... okay so in source file on 16th of december you got the information that c has c employee c has joined the organization so you are getting only this information information of a and b is missing so you will assume, you will assume that it has been deleted okay any other thought so one guys any other thought uh see uh, it has it has agreed already that you are working on which load it should be a b c records Ah, you have you you already have an agreement with the source team that your project is working in a full load. So it means you are assuming that whether if if a new person has joined the organization, that's fine. You should get that information. That is mandatory. But apart from that, you should get the previous information as well, right? This is the this is as per the 
uh, full load logic. So this information is missing. You should not assume it that it has been deleted, but you have to report it back to the source team. That why this information is missing. We are working on a full load. So I want all the data, all the missing data. Just a minute, guys. My speaker. Yeah. So full load. So you you want all the data, right? So you have to raise a defect to source team. That was uh, the data in this particular file was missing. Is this clear? Hello. Yeah. yeah clear clear, clear. <clears throat> so now you should get this data because you're working in full load okay so c has joined the organization so after that you will do the basic file evaluation you will learn the stage job to load data in a staging table so after data has been loaded in a staging table okay suppose you run this stage job to load data in a staging table and the job has failed then what you will do? job has failed what you will do We will get an email notification to all the developer, uh, to all the respective team member. Ah, oh, correct. If the job has failed, you will get a notification. That's correct. But what is your responsibility as a tester? What you will do then? We need to raise a defect in audit tables. Audit oh, tables. You see, in these things, you are working in SIT. Okay. So in SIT, a uh, SIT environment. It is not necessary that email notification will be sent because seat environment is for practice or try or testing. Or maybe the email notification will be sent to you only because in seat generally the email notification will not go to the developers or to the business stakeholders. No, seat is for your purpose only. The email notification will be triggered, especially in production. Okay. So that's why if you have run the stage job and the job has failed, so as a tester, it's your responsibility to look into the log file. So in the email notification, what you what you should receive, first of all, you should check that email notification has been received or not. If you have not received any email notification, that's again a defect. You have to raise this effect to the development team that there is some issue in your coding. The job has failed, but we have not received any email. But if the email, if you have received, there must be an attachment, which, which is a log file. You should open the log file and you should see what is the reason why the job has failed. Then you should do some root cause analysis. That's why these days, you should work in white box testing. It means you should know the coding part as well. You should know what is happening in the code. You should know what is happening in the job. So you should do the root cause analysis and then you have to raise the defect to the development team. We don't have to raise the defect here to the sourcing. Whenever there is an issue with the data load or with the job, if it is failing, that defect you, you have to raise to the development team that there is, the, the, there is some issue with your code, the job has failed. Okay, now the job can fail because of n number of reasons. I think we have discussed in the beginning. Okay, fine. Now, suppose the job has passed. Now, consider that scenario the job has passed, then what should happen? So, if the job has passed, data should be loaded in employee stage table. Correct. Now, stage table, you will be having. this new entry is it correct so far everything is fine yes any question guys any confusion anything which you want me to repeat everything is yeah, clear so yeah. Far? yeah okay so see, this was the very very basic scenario now coming to the twist here yeah now on 17th of december now try to understand from here 17th of december 2021 uh, a b c now a resigns okay so now a has resigned from the organization okay so if a has resigned from the organization so the source team what they will do Now we are on 17th of December 2021. A has resigned from the organization. So the source team will not send you the data of A. Now, you might be thinking, you can tell me 
the tanveer we are working on a full load then ideally the source should send me all the data all right correct now you should ask me the tanveer we are working on a full load so even if a has resigned then the source team should send me the data of a as well but no the source team will send you only active records the source team will send you only active records so if a has resigned so his transactions will not be sent by the source team to you is this clear so now the source team will give you only this information is it clear yeah clear now let's let let me add one more thing here suppose a resigns and d is a new employee d has joined so on 17 december two things will happen a has resigned and d has joined so the source team will give you the information of d as well okay the source team will give you this information as well now you have received the source file you will do the basic file relation you will run the stage load stage job to load data in a staging table so now the thing is what will happen in a stage now try to understand here so what was the last snapshot of a stage so this was the data which was present earlier in the stage correct till 16th of december now let's try to understand the difference what will happen in 17th of december first of all on 17th of december you have learned you have run the job so this data will be loaded that is very straightforward no discussion on this i think this is simple right the employee d information will be here now what about employee a information what will happen to this tell me that will present but act to flag should be in perfect very good now the code the, the job should be run in such a way that okay the employee information a is not coming from the source employee information a is not coming from the source and we are working on a full load so we are expecting that the data of all the employees should be uh, should be sent on a daily basis that's a well known fact because we are working on a full load so the job has observed that employee a information is missing okay so the job will think that okay that employee has left the organization because that information is missing and we are under the impression that we are working on a full load so all the inform all the employee information should be sent by the source team so the job will see here that employee information is missing then the job will mark it n okay and this all will be y okay and then you will be having from data to data as well okay is this clear now yeah clear so now this will be n and uh, the remaining will be y this will be y so now from this you will understand that okay now you will be thinking that this employee a information has not been sent okay so it is missing here but you have maintained a history here so this is known as soft edit guys is this clear now so can we one quick question ha uh ha -huh, sure so i understood like when the, when the for the first time when we the, the employee a data is missing so the next day also you will be getting the b c d alone so what what our job will do like since already a is having a n flag and it will check for the two date uh, whether it will update or it will leave as it is when the two date uh, field is filled with the values so it will ignore that uh which value for the employee a or the remaining yeah for em for employee a for employee a so if it is not coming in the source file so the job first of all it will mark the flag as n okay and before this this will be there this will be uh, this value will not be there but when it will mark n so it will add the sys date sys date means system date so so we have run this job on 17th of december on 17th of december this system date will be your 17th december so it will mark it 17th 12 
2021. So it means this record was active on 20 December 2021, and this is inactive. 20 January 2021, he has joined, and 17 December 2021, he has left the organization. But all these employees are still active, so this two date will be blank. Or in some cases, they'll mark it as like this. In some cases, okay, very high date. This is another high end date. They'll mark like this. So either this will be null or this will mark as a very uh, high end date. So this will indicate that these employees are active, but for this employee, they'll mark active flag as a, and two date will be the date on which it was inactive. Is this the question you have asked or something different? No. So when they run the job on 18th, so what on whether... 18th, next day. Yeah. Okay. Is there any impact on the recording? Oh, okay. 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 So now if they're going to run job on 18th December 2021, okay. So there will be no impact. Now this is like a freeze to record. Nothing will happen to this. This is like a uh, statue. Nothing will happen to this because there is no moment because this employee has left the organization. So nothing will happen. This will be like this only. Okay. Hello, if, Arikar. If, hmm. if suppose they uh, include this record A uh -huh. on 18, so what will be that scenario? Then it will remove that uh, end date, two oh, date again. Okay, okay, okay. You are telling that on 18 December uh, in the source file, right? In the source file, uh, uh, source file. On the source file, now they have they are sending me this information again. This is what you are mentioning. Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, okay. So suppose on 18th, they are they are sending me this data again. And actually, you know, this happens. I will tell you in which scenario. Sometime what happened? No, they will forget to send this uh, A information in the source file. But this is very rarest of the rare scenario, but it happens, okay? So we will be under the impression that, okay, this A has left the employee, uh, left the organization, and we will mark flag as N, and two date will be the date on which it was deleted. Okay. So first of all, before coming to this one, this is a special scenario, any question till here, till here, any question? Anyone, please ask me if you have any question. Then I'll move to this special scenario. Okay, no question. Then let's move to this. So suppose on 18 December on the same source file. Okay, what happened? The source team is uh, now now they're sending me this data again. Okay, maybe they would have forgot to send on the 17 December, but 18 December they are again sending me this data. That employee information is coming again. This is really a different and surprising scenario that why it has happened. But the question is. Whatever it may be, by mistake, intentionally or unintentionally, whatever it may be. Now, suppose on 18 December, this data is coming again. So if I will run the job to load data in a staging table, so what will happen? This is the question, right? Okay, see what will happen. This is your data in a stage. So in this case, if this A information is coming again, so now try to understand how your uh, stage matches the data okay suppose in your case this employee id is the primary key okay or maybe you can understand here how it has happened so this was the table this was the data present in the stage table earlier okay on 16th of december this was the data present in the stage table on 17th you got this data Okay, now all these things are black world for you. Let me make it black. This is a black world for you. Forget about this thing. On 16 December, a stage table, this was the data. Correct. On 17th, you have received this data and it says that employee A data is missing. Maybe he has left the organization or by mistake the source team has missed that information, whatever it may be. Now let's try to understand that how the stage table is getting populated first of all. Then you will understand the other things. In a stage table, your employee ID is the primary key. Now, now you have run the stage job to load it in a stage. Now, what that job will do? Let's try to understand what the job will do. First of all, that job will take the data of your all your stage table then it will take data of all your source file so from this what i'm trying to tell you first of all it will take the stage table 
okay now in the stage of employee id 1 it will search that employee id 1 is present here it is present here no no so job will understand that okay this employee id 1 is not present so it means employee id 1 has left the organization okay so i'm telling you that how job behaves try to understand this so what it will do it will keep this information this information is already present here so the job will think that okay employee id 1 information is not present in the source file so it means he has left the organization so it will mark flag as n and then you have similarly from data and to data as well let me copy it here it will populate this data as well from data and to data okay that is clear then your job will go to the second record just a minute this is confusing Oh, what is not coming up? Okay, it's not coming up. I think there is some. What is not coming up? Hmm. From date, and then you have to date. Again, it's not coming up. Let me. So then uh, your job will go to the second employee two. Now employee two is present here in the source file. Yes. Yeah, present. Okay. If it is present, then it will do a column to column match. What is the meaning of column to column match? For employee D2, name was B. It will check here. Name is B. No difference. Employee 2, location is Kolkata. Employee 2, location is Kolkata. No difference. So it will keep it as it is. Active flag Y. It will not do anything. Okay. Now it will go to the next record. Employee D3. It will search here. Employee D3 is present or not. Yeah, employee ID 3 is present. Then it will do a column to column match. Name is C. Name is C. It is same. No change. Location Mumbai. Location Mumbai. No change. It will keep it as Y only. Okay. And from date and to date, it will mark it. So now this employee stage table, it has mapped. Now it will move to the source file. Employee 2, the details it has matched. Employee 3, detail has already been matched. Then you will see that, okay, new employee 4 has joined the organization. Now this employee ID 4 is present in this stage table earlier. It was not present earlier. So it will copy it and it will paste it here. And it will mark the active flag as Y and from date will be today's date. So today's like 17 December, it will mark it as 17 December. So the job actually behaves like this. It works like this. Is this clear first of all, how the job works, how it matches the data? Is it clear? Yes. Everyone, is it clear? Yeah, clear. Yes. Anyone who wants me to repeat this? No? Yes? Okay, I think no. Suppose, now try to understand a twist here. Suppose uh, on 17th of December, I received this source file and it says that employee C location has changed from Mumbai to Bangalore. Okay, the location has changed from Mumbai to Bangalore. So what will happen? Now your job, it will come to this employee ID 3. It will search here. Employee ID 3 is present. Okay, it is present. Name is C. Name is C. Okay, it is same. Location is Mumbai. Location is Bangalore. Okay, so the job will think that, okay, the location of this employee 3 has changed from Mumbai to Bangalore. So what your job will do, it will copy this Bangalore from here and it will paste here. Okay, and then you'll be having one more column known as update date. Okay, and here it will mark it as 17th of December. So you understand that, okay, on 17th of December, some of the record in this, uh, some of the uh, column value or the data in this record has changed. Is it clear, guys, how the job behaves, how it works? Clear? Yeah, clear. <clears throat> okay. Now try to understand this case, special case. Mm. 
okay now in this case what will happen you have this information the stage now and on 18th december uh, the source file this a was missing and that's why i mark this as n but the question was suppose on 18th december again this data is uh, no sorry yeah 18 december we we got this data in the source file because on 17 december a was missing now 18 december in the source file we are getting the information about the employee name a so what will happen this is stage data this was the question now again same thing you can do what will happen uh, this was the stage data you have present already so what it will do it will start from a1 okay so employee id 1 that is present here it is present the moment it will think that okay employee id 1 is present here it will mark flag from n to y okay y yeah and your update date you will get today's day that's today we are considering as 18 december so you will get 18 december 2021 okay and but but this two date will not be changed okay this two date will not be changed this will be as it is okay but your flag will be y now in this you will understand that okay this two date was 17 december earlier but how the flag is y so you will understand that okay earlier it was inactive then it was made active on on this particular date 18th of december is this clear yeah clear yeah so now there is one issue <clears throat> that two date uh, 17 december is there so it means on 17 december this particular employee was was marked inactive but it was marked active on uh, so on 18 december we have updated this record so on 18 december again this is active so anyone who will, who will see this record he will understand first of all he will think that how is it possible that flag is why this implies active but this two date is populated because we have discussed that all the employees who are active this two date will be either high in date or this will be null, right? We have discussed that. Let's keep it null only. So a particular user will think that how is it possible that employee is active and the two date is populated here? Because we know that if an employee is active, the two date must be null. So how is it possible? Then he will look at this updated date. So he will understand that, okay, on 17 December, it will mark as inactive. But again, on 18 December, again, on 18 December, something has updated and again this particular employee retail has uh, came from the source team and that's why we have marked this flag as y is this clear yeah clear yeah any question guys on this no questions okay if you don't have any question this was a very important concept soft delete and i've tried to make you understand from that uh, source file perspective from technical perspective how the job runs and how it matches and exactly it happens this way so when you're doing the testing if you want you can try this to test the scenario as well you should know the importance of flag the from date to date update these all are very important audit columns these are known as audit columns okay you should know this how it is working okay so uh, then tomorrow i think we have scds i will start with scd and this scd is related to soft delete okay so if you know soft delete it will be easy to understand scds as well okay because they both are related and most probably in scds i will use the same example to discuss the same thing we will use to discuss there as well okay uh, last call do you have any question guys I think that one uh, full load or uh, the incremental load that will decide it uh, initially uh, from the customer or what? Oh, the full load, incremental load or whatever load it is, at the very beginning, when you are, when you are going to start the project, okay, at time at that time itself, that has to be discussed and that has to be maintained in FRD document or if you are maintaining conference link. No? So all these things will be maintained there, there only. You have to maintain all these things there. That's very important yeah okay okay now there are many other flavors in this so i have shown you example of full load so if you have incremental load then you can think what will happen you can take this as an assignment consider that your project is working in incremental load and try to replicate the same scenario and then think that what will happen okay fine any other question guys uh Tanvir, i have a question now mm -hmm. okay uh okay yeah manikanta right 
so yeah. manikanta you sorry you have uh, you have posted one question on my whatsapp group so i will discuss that with you with you today okay that what exactly requirement you are looking for and then we can go ahead with that so the, the very good question manikanta has posted so uh, you guys as well if you're getting a stuck anywhere in sql or any other thing you can um, you can ask me on whatsapp or uh, many of my students who are working in a project and if they're getting a stuck in sql queries some error messages are coming so they're asking so you can ask yeah don't uh, share a screen because those data are confidential of the organization you should not share that but if you're getting a stuck you can connect with me yeah marikant over to you uh, in the location change example uh, mm -hmm. in bangalore Mm -hmm. So, uh, how will you get to know only the location has been changed? It, it might be correct, correct. Ah, uh -huh. very good, very good catch. You are column correct. to column. No, no, no. Matching data man. Uh, I think Manikanta is asking that. Okay, Tanvir, you are telling that on seventeen December something has changed. But how you can confirm that the location only has changed? I think that's what you mentioned, no? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, correct. So here it will be difficult to find that. Okay, which particular value has changed? So that's what when I will teach you SCD is no slowly changing dimension. So that that will tell you that exactly which column has changed because maybe on seventeenth of December how I can confirm that location has changed. Maybe the name of employee C has changed. Sometimes it happens, right? The ladies employee when they are getting married, so they used to take the title of their husband. It happens sometimes. So so their name will change and they will give a uh, request in their organization that okay my sir name or title has changed. So please change that. So that's correct. If I am just telling that on seventeen December something has changed, so it is difficult from this to find that what information has changed, name has changed, or location has changed, or whatever it may be. Okay. So whenever we cover that SCD, you know, so then I will tell you that will help you to understand. From that you can get to know that which particular attribute of a particular employee has changed. We'll discuss that too. Sir, sir, a few minutes back you said the job will perform column to column data matching also. Ah, uh -huh, correct. Correct. Employee. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In that case, we will we will find we will track now. Location is changing. Mm. Column to column data match. No, but that job is doing. No, that yeah, job, job is, is doing because uh, as a user, I cannot see what job is uh, uh, what the job is doing, right? Because I have told you the internal task of job. That job is behaving like this, correct? So that is the internal task. Yeah, you can tell one thing that okay, Tanvir, you have data uh, in staging. You have this data, and earlier you were having this data in staging. So you, from this, you can compare that on C uh, third C, it was Mumbai. Now it is Bangalore, right? So from this we can compare. But you don't have this snapshot now because this was on seventeen December. Now eighteen December, the snapshot has changed, right? So from here it is difficult. Or maybe suppose if you have one more column here. I will insert one more column. Manager name. Okay, manager name. And suppose so manager name was suppose uh, B G H anything. So again, it is difficult to find that. Okay, which one has changed? Manager name has changed, or location has changed, or or maybe name has name doesn't change very frequently. So it is difficult to find that what exactly has changed. And that's why we used to go for SCD, slowly changing dimension, which we'll discuss tomorrow. And from that, you can understand that which column has changed, how frequently it has changed, okay, and all those things. Point. So then we like when we run the job, generally we used to get in a log file. Whether the log file will contain the information, what are the uh, uh, updates have been made in the? No, no, no. The log file will just tell you that how many records were updated, how many records were inserted. Okay, it will just give you the numbers that how many these values were updated or changed. But if you want to see the exact value which has changed, we have to go for SCD slowly changing dimensions. Okay. Okay. So log will just give you indicative information about the stats. Any other question, guys? Okay. So if you don't have any other question, so it's fine. We'll connect tomorrow at seven. But please go through this and before ending tomorrow's session, and go through this example again. And if you have any question, because tomorrow's series will be based on this one. Okay. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye.